here's a system. I want you to write it down. Uh, basically, what you do is you want to map out your area that you're going to test. Uh, I, I recommend that you put these in lower income to the median income or less neighborhoods. They're more effective. Uh, there's not a lot of people in multi-million dollar homes that call off bandit signs. <laughs> this, you'll find that to be true. Uh, you put them in... Uh, we make the majority of our money in lower income and middle income neighborhoods. That's where the best opportunities lie. That's where the most distressed properties are. That's where properties a lot of times need to work. That's where we can add value to these properties. The most risky part of the real estate market is luxury homes. It is. Because luxury homes are completely dependent upon the person who is walking through the property and whether they like the property. It's, it's a lot less risky to buy a, a 25 unit apartment building that might be three million bucks than it is to buy a, uh, a two million dollar luxury home. You know the incomes, you know the rents, you have an idea of the, the rental rates in that area, of the vacancy rates. You, everything's known. Uh, real estate is about making money um, by understanding, obviously, numbers, by understanding the values, understanding what it would be worth, understanding what kind of uh, vacancy rate, you know, it's very easy. Luxury homes are dependent upon a one particular buyer liking the style of the kitchen, the flow of the house. It's risky. It's much riskier. That's why I'm going to tell you, if you're starting out, the easiest way to make money is right around bread and butter homes, three, four bedroom homes that are 1,000 to 2,000 square feet. It's very simple conceptually to understand how to put a transaction together. Then you progress to other areas if you want. We have a lot of students who are commercial investors and they make, they fuel their commercial investments by wholesaling homes. So they do both. It really is dependent on what you want to do, right? So getting back to these signs, you're going to get a lot of calls. The call, quality of call is not necessarily going to be very good though because you're getting everything under the sun approaching you. If you're putting them, the, out, them out, and a lot of times in median or lower income areas, you'll get more calls, right? Uh, the cons are, well, number one con is a lot of areas, they crack down on these things. Has anybody ever put up a sign and got called for uh, their sign getting put up? Anybody? Right? So we got a, little, a couple different ways to handle that. We'll, that's, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll get into that a little bit later. But obviously some municipalities are difficult, right? Obviously they can be removed very easily. But think about it. You can put them off the sides of highways where, you know, there might be 20,000 cars a day going by this particular sign. There might be thousands of cars in areas, right, going by these signs. Great areas to put them out. Just a couple keys. Uh, here's the cost. Uh, 18 by 24 corrugated plastic signs. Just a little note, if you're in a very windy area, sometimes these things will fold over if you're in a very windy area. So just be aware of that. Uh, 12 by 18, the bigger the better, stakes 50 cents a piece. I want to show you guys real quickly um, the targeting though. What we want to do, is, sorry, I want to show you guys real quick. I want to show you the response rates. Let me, let me show you very quickly. Oh, here, by the way, this is the website that you guys can use. If you go to Super Cheap Signs on the FortuneBuilders.com site, um, we have certain home, signs that work very well is if you have a short name that you can put up there, right? If not, if you've got somebody in your office that answers the phones, obviously you can use their name as well, right? Very short name uh, works very well. It just personalizes the message. Anything that you can do to make your message stand out, the brighter the better when it comes to color, right? We use obviously very bright colors. But you can see our signs look very similar to our billboards, look very similar to our truck. We're trying to make these things stand out so that people call us. Now, here's the frequency. I've noticed that if you put signs out in an area and you tend to stick to the same street corners when you put them out, you will get higher call volume. If you start moving them everywhere and there's no frequency, people sometimes will drive by a sign 25 times and then they see it for the first time, right? They, they won't notice it. I, I noticed this when it came to marketing. We started doing billboards and what I did is I started moving them and testing the areas and I realized that the call volume went down when I started moving up. And then I just started thinking, I go, you know what, it's kind of logical. People drive home the same way from work every day, and then all of a sudden they notice the billboard. So I started just finding the good areas and then keeping them set. Same thing, we tested, uh, we tested bus signs. Has any guy, anybody ever seen a bus with like signs on the side? You guys ever seen this? Well, think about this. I, I spent 10 grand 
on these bus signs. We got two freaking phone calls from these, from these buses. Two. And then I figured out what we did wrong. Right? I realized, number one, that our, our phone number on the side of the bus wasn't very big. Second thing is we made like this really fancy sign and almost looked like camouflage. Like our message was in camouflage. Plus, they're moving. Right? So there's no frequency. So when you have signs, obviously, the more frequency, the better. Here's the golden rule, though. The best way uh, to figure out what you can't do with signs, though, is you can't plaster them everywhere. You, uh, unfortunately, I wish you could, but you're going to get calls from the town very quickly if you're on every single street corner. So you just have to spread them strategically, and you'll get uh, a pretty good call volume without making too many people upset. 